XL Championship. It's East versus West tonight in a pivotal matchup near the Bay Area, and we're happy to bring you an encounter that should be a good one. USL Championship action from Oakland gives us the Oakland Roots SC versus Detroit City FC. Good evening, everyone from Hayward, California. I'm David Gasca alongside Ricky Lopez Espin. Ricky, East versus West matchup, not something we see a great deal of, but there'll be all eyes on this one because of playoff implications. I think you have to look at both of these sides last time out coming off a win. So they're going to be motivated. They're going to be confident. And I think for Detroit City, you're coming into a very hostile environment, which is the Oakland Roots, who are sitting fourth in the Western Conference. And they won a home playoff game. So again, it's going to be very interesting, the mentality of this matchup. You could talk about so many players with Oakland, but it all starts and ends with a man between the pipes in Paul Blanchett. And isn't it crazy that we come to expect just the spectacular from Paul Blanchett time after time, big save after big save. But what's so impressive to me about Paul Blanchett, it's just the progression that we've seen through him with the ball at his feet, the, the ability to pick out a pass and change the point of attack, but also between the sticks, he's been massive for the Oakland Roots. And on the other side of things for Detroit, I don't know how they did it, but you get to tell me because they were in a hole to open up the season, but they've climbed up from the ashes. And I think this man has a lot to do with it. Darius Suarez, the ability to be players 1v1 combination play if you're Trevor James you want him playing off the shoulder of Morris who's going to be the striker there but how quickly can Suarez get on the ball asking questions and testing the shape of this Oakland Roots back line Detroit City is trying to push themselves into a playoff spot Oakland right now trying to solidify their standings out west should be a good one come back with this side we'll get you the starting 11s and first touch it's Detroit City Oakland Roots coming up next It doesn't matter how hard you play, practice, or compete, as long as you do it together. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots teamed up and took on food insecurity. Empowered all athletes to improve physical health and expanded health and wellness resources available to the residents of Oakland and the Bay Area. We're committed to continuing our work to improve the lives and health of our community together. Visit oaklandroots.com anthem to learn more. If Damian Lillard accepted his spot at the end of the bench, he never would have been at the rec center before it opened. If he listened to those who overlooked him, he never would have heard his name called as a first round pick. And if he let six all-star selections go to his head, he never would have had the heart to give back to the streets that shaped him. That's the fighting spirit. That's what makes a lion. Modelo, root for those with a fighting spirit. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Broadcast is brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross, UCSF, 
and Modelo. Take a look at the fans here from Hayward, California. A gorgeous Saturday night, wherever you may be. Pull up a chair, grab a drink. We'll look at the starting laps brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. And what do we got tonight, Oakland? I think you have to look at that center pairing between Joseph Nane and Gomez. What does that relationship look like? Nane is going to be in front of that back three. So Gomez is going to join the attack as he sees fit. Goal line higher. Johnny Rodriguez doesn't score last week, but you know he's going to be motivated. He's going to stay high. He's going to occupy the two center backs and the movement of Sedanio and Mefeka need to be very good. One coming to feet, but also one's testing and stretching this back line of Detroit City. And you have Prentice and you have Memo Diaz joining the attack and overloading on wide areas. And Paul Blanchett, he's been fantastic for Oakland, but for Detroit City, Nate Steinwash is the guy between the pipes. I think you mentioned it off air, David, just saying the goalkeepers. That's going to be a massive talking point in this match. But again, you go into this, the, the, this Detroit side, how compact can they be in the back? Carroll and Lewis, how, how good can they be stepping into that middle third, creating overloads? And then you have Job and Rodriguez. How quick can they get in a rhythm? Suarez and Morris, they're going to be game changers. That relationship needs to be spot on for Trevor James on the road. It felt like a couple months ago you were ready to put dirt on Detroit because Frankly, they didn't get out of the gates well, but they've recovered, they've returned to form, and you have to be encouraged if you are a Detroit City fan, not because of how they started, but because they've continued to rally behind everybody, starters and the guys on the bench. I think we had an opportunity to talk to Trevor James, and he said, look, their talent was always there. It's not a matter of if, it was a matter of when. We were starting to pick up points, especially on the road. So again, brilliant opportunity for Detroit City here. And Detroit will be moving coming on the road at 6 11 and 5 this season they have 23 points now they're going to worry about a team from miami that's won back-to-back -back contests you see the record for oakland at 9 6 and 6 playing in front of a rowdy bunch here they certainly give the home team faithful shot on goal it's the first one of the night and the scoreboard early on favors the home team and it's one to nothing oakland roots exactly how you dial it up for maxi rodriguez You talk about a dream start for Nel Delgado. How quickly can you expand and play off the shoulder of Detroit City? And we've seen it from John Rodriguez time and time throughout this year. The ability to create something out of nothing. Picks up his head, no one closes down the space, whether it is Lewis, whether it is Carroll, and pick that out. Head down, lace it through the ball. You see the lack of rotation on the ball. He hits it so clean and so pure. Dream start here for the Oakland Roots. We just mentioned how the fans get behind Rodriguez. That goal results in a $510 donation to Oakland Parks Rec Foundation, brought to you by East Bay Community Energy. OPRF provides financial and volunteer resources and advocates for recreational programs and parks in Oakland. So that's a good way to keep the fans engaged, an opening goal in the first couple minutes. I think it was always going to be interesting as well, David, because you look at the prior games for the Oakland Roots. Pelias scores back-to-back -back games, so if you're Noah Delgado, I think you rolled the dice. Who's going to be the star, the target number nine for you, whether it was going to be the guy that's in rhythm or John Rodriguez, and he makes that decision a lot, whole, a lot easier for Noah Delgado. What a fantastic goal that is. And he just turned and fired and beat Steinwasher. His ninth goal of the season, and it's 1-0 Oakland, right out of the gates. And Steinwasher, you could see the end result. Had a lot of displeasure on his body language, but didn't really have a good chance at stopping that shot for Rodriguez because it was a bullet. So a good start for Oakland and now for Detroit. They have to wake up. But back on the counter they go. No numbers, though, in their transition game. This one played through into the box, but he immediately rejected by Oakland. Detroit City behind early on this contest. And you're thinking about where they are in the Eastern Conference standings. They've been making up a lot of ground, but the time is a question mark for them. And you can't help but think what the margin of error is like. That pass is intercepted. Memo Diaz on the intercept. And now I think for Detroit City, what does the reaction look like? Especially when you go on the road here in this hostile environment, you go down not even a minute in the game. So you want to get 
Job and Maxi Rodriguez on the ball a bit more. Those are the, the two center midfielders. They're going to dictate tempo and get the confidence within the side. And that's something that Trevor James is one going to want to see a bit more often for Detroit City. FC Tulsa, Indy 11 are ahead of Detroit City. And for Oakland right now, one of the top tier teams in the Western Conference, Oakland, if you go by real time, would elevate themselves into the second slot behind Sacramento. But you still have Sacramento, Oakland, San Antonio, and then El Paso who are up there amongst the top four teams in the Western Conference. You'd love to capture a home round matchup in the opening stages of USL Championship playoff action. But I mean, Ricky, you've seen it. Playoffs, US Open Cup. And you get fans like this in Oakland, it makes the world a difference. And I think you talk to everyone throughout the Oakland Roots, front office, PR people as well. Chope takes the shot, that stop nicely done by Blanchett, pushes it to the right-hand side, it's his first stop of the night. Very difficult technique to go up and over the wall with a lot of dip on it. Chope hits it very cleanly. Not an easy save there for Paul Blanchett, makes it look a lot easier than it is. A half step right off of the turf right before it securely puts it out for a corner kick. Paul Blanchett is a walking highlight reel for Oakland. He is so reliable. This one played through, and there's the equalizer in the fifth minute. Well, Ricky, you asked the question. There's your answer. How would Detroit respond? Bang, bang, play. Stephen Carroll on the board for the second time this season, and we're bottled up at one apiece. It's incredible, the reaction. Set pieces are a brilliant way to claw yourself back into the game, but if you're no Delgado, you're gonna be extremely frustrated with the lack of taking the initiative to clear this ball. As this ball bounces in that six yard box, give credit to the big man, the center back, right at the doorstep. Guide, guide it into the back of the post and not a very easy finish for a player that quality. I think that view right there was perfect from our crew, not because the angle was great, but because of the sun. That's a bad angle to look at. When you think about the area of where Blanchett was in that goal line, you're not seeing a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, but also just talk about the credit, the quality of the ball in, because they understand Paul Blanchett's under a lot of pressure with the traffic sitting right on top of that six yard box. You put it in a mixer, good things happen. Detroit City draw this game even in the fifth minute. Wild, wild start. We've had just about everything happen the first five minutes of this contest. Never a dull moment, USL <laughs> Championship, is it? Rodriguez turned and fired for his ninth of the year. And Stephen Carroll off the back line for Detroit. Set pieces, and they work. So both keepers victimized here as we're in the seventh minute. This one lobbed through with traffic near the six. I got a moment in time. Injury report brought to you by UCSF Health and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Got a couple guys banged up on both ends of the pitch for Oakland and Detroit City. Notably, the man that comes over into the Formella trade. Try someone that's going to give this Oakland Root side a completely different look. And for Detroit City, Rutz is the one that stands out to me. Diaz on the approach, weak side, nobody home for Oakland. Diaz with a nice loft. Morad plays it back. Barbier, Morad, Hacksaw, Gomez, all the way around. We're on the attack. Diaz, top of the box, pulled the trigger, disrupted on the way through. So if you thought there'd be some tired legs for Oakland after playing a couple nights ago, think again. I don't think he's been a massive player since coming over to the Oakland Roots. So Daniel, not a lot in there, makes the most of it. There is a little bit of contact, but would have been very harsh to point to the spot. I think you have on this relationship, on this near side for the Roots, whether it is Memo Diaz, whether it is 
to Daniel, the ability to one play centrally, one provides it with, puts a lot of pressure on opposing outside back. So if you're Levis, you have to make a decision. Do you stay centrally and compact with your back four? Or do you go out and face and isolate, whether it is Diaz or Daniel? So again, big question marks to be answered the outside backs for Detroit City. Sedania here. Sedania lost the handle and it could not maintain possession. Depossessed in that moment in time. Detroit City in their light kits today. Oakland Roots, the dark uniforms. Nane got taken down with a cold shoulder. He lost possession on it. And Detroit City gave it right back. Axa on the opposite end. So we've seen two goals in the first nine minutes of action. Some pretty decent physicality. And as you mentioned it, Ricky, these teams aren't familiar with each other, of course. They do have history, though. There are members of NISA and met in the finals a long time ago, back when we were young men. <laughs> And also the first time that Detroit City comes over to the Bay Area. Get the ultimate flexibility with a drinks and seat three pack. Each pack includes three any game ticket vouchers valid for all of 2023 regular season home matches. In addition, each voucher also includes two complimentary drinks, either beer or soft drinks, which will be available to pick up on game day. For more information, visit us at OaklandRootsSC.com forward slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. That'd be good for a couple of Modellos right now. I don't know about you. It'd be perfect with the fans here in Oakland. <laughs> I mean, they love their ball. You think about Oakland this season, where they're at, not only in the Western Conference standings, but where they are in the pitch. And their inaugural game at home this season was interrupted because of Mother Nature, so they had to relocate facilities, and well, they haven't missed a beat. That's something that we've come to expect for the Oakland Roots. It's just a, the support throughout the community. I think it's not far-fetched saying that if you look at the social media reach, you, you look at the ability to connect with the community around them, none better than the Oakland Roots throughout the USL Championship, as well as Detroit City. Keyworth has been massive. Great ball. Nearly played and squirted through by Cedeno trying to create. Yeah, the, the engagement's phenomenal on social media. And I think for both of these sides, you go to Detroit City, probably one if, if not, the worst places to go if you're an opposite team. How good Detroit City with the hostile environment there. Such a special place for them to be at home. Corner kick brought to you by East Bay Community Energy. East Bay Community Energy providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more today. In the 12th minute, Diaz, a little bit of lift on it. Barbier. Searching, looking for some help. Danny trying to work way around some traffic, but it'll be a throw in for Oakland. Oakland right now, nine, six, and six. Excellent at home. Four wins, two losses, and four draws. You think about where they are. Excellent at home and solid on the road. It's a recipe for success, especially when you get into the postseason of USL Championship, because you'll eventually have to win something on the road, assuming you're not the top dog in either the West or the Eastern Conference. A little bit of a surprise out East with Louisville struggling as of late. Tampa Bay been on the rise. Out West, it's been the same song and dance with a certain team in Sacramento and San Antonio. But Oakland trying to do a lot more damage this year when it comes to the postseason activities. Steinwasher switching the pitch. Detroit trying to do something with it fruitful here. Nice pickoff and an intercept by Morat. I think for Detroit City, yes, if you want to play Route 1 and deal with this initial pressure for the Oakland Route, second balls become that much more important. You play into more, so what does the reaction look like for Maxi Rodriguez and Joe in the central locations for the visitors? 
you want to play possession base, again, you need them to drop down a bit more to provide that connection support system. We haven't seen Suarez on the ball nearly enough for Detroit City, and that's something that Trevor James was quick to point out on our phone call, David, saying, look, he's such a special player for us. He yeah. gives us that creativityness in that final third. 14 minutes in, it's been extremely quiet. Even though they don't play each other as much as they have in years past, do you think players still have a, a great deal of familiarity on both ends when it comes to the opposition like this? Well, I think that's the beauty for USL Championship because so many teams flip and change players. I mean, you look at Larry Suarez was with FC Tulsa yeah. earlier this year, so now he comes over to Detroit City, a different look, a different opportunity, and just a different setting. So every single one of these players understands the opposite, whether it is in the Eastern Conference, whether it's in the Western Conference, and everyone's know the characteristic because there's so much film now, and you understand how comfortable the tendencies of your opposition. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you mentioned the fluidity and yeah, players coming and going. There's certain clubs throughout USL that have done wholesale roster changes. I mean, Phoenix comes to mind as one of them, but there's other clubs like a loose city that say, you know what, we're going to go with the guys that brought us to the dance, and that's paid off huge dividends. Just different philosophies from well there it is the people in the front office yeah budgets are everything too you've seen certain clubs that have pulled the purse out from under the spending and others not so much and a man down for oakland brad jensen the lead official tonight that goal by stephen carroll occurring in the fifth minute off the set piece richard ballard with the assist on it for Ballots' his first helper of the year. Trevor James and company happy with the equalizer. Rodriguez, his goal, ninth of the year. Reed with the assist as Rodriguez trying to pick himself off the deck. Injuries at different times of the year hurt, and for Rodriguez, want to make sure he's healthy for the important time of this season. It's an awkward coming together through the backside there from Lewis. Well, not, not a whole lot, but as a striker, you leave yourself exposed, especially in the lower back area. Hopefully he's okay. He's been massive for the Oaken Roots and I had this conversation earlier. Just a progression, not only for Johnny Rodriguez, but the way that he's matured in the system for the Oakland Roots. Well, a threat to score nine in and nine out, and it does so much for opening up lanes for your teammates. Man, it just, like you said, it didn't look like he was struck hard, but it's where he got hit. I think it has been a part of his growth just playing with his back to goal. You see the, the jersey there, Otar Carlson. He was really the main man when he was with the Oakland Roots. So Johnny Rodriguez was most likely coming off the bench, but now he took an opportunity with both hands and made the number nine position his own. Nine goals on the year, hasn't looked, missed a beat. Whether it's bringing players into the game, playing with his back to goal, creating space for himself or other players, he's been massive in terms of just growing up and understanding what's asked of him. The way that he plays the game, so hats off to Johnny Rodriguez and also Noah Delgado giving him the belief and the confidence to excel in the field. Yeah, Noah speaking to us earlier this week, he exudes confidence. And he feels like this is about his quality of a team, not only in the Western Conference, but all of USL Championship. I think if you ask both of these hook coaches, they always back their players so they understand the talent that we have on our roster can go head to head with everyone in USL Championship. That, that's a great ball. Joe, I think you need to get him more involved. Those two players, a relationship for Trevor James. Detroit has not had a lot of possession time here in the first half, but the scores level at one apiece, so they don't care. The end result is all that matters. But a good flow so far through the first 17 plus minutes of action here from Hayward, California. Sun continues to set on the West Coast. Right now it's about 724. Add three hours to the east. But sunset usually occurs on the West Coast right around 830-ish. So 
Still plenty of time with Mother Nature hanging out with us, but no threats of rain or anything like that. Got to imagine a lot of the guys from Detroit are happy just to get out of Dodge because the weather right now, Central California, the Midwest, you're talking about temperatures, high 90s, low 100s. And God forbid you don't go into Arizona where they were talking about 117 degrees. Rodriguez was flanked out to the right side. Nobody saw him, though. Reed had a pivot on it, but gave it away. Oakland scoring first. And they're unbeaten in the last 12 matches when scoring first. Although the concession came moments after that. This one played through. Blanchett thought about coming out, but an alert play by Hacksaw. Uh, if they cross the goal line, it'll be a goal kick. It's really good passage of play there from Detroit City. As Suarez comes in centrally, Morris has the ability to get in behind, up, back, and through. I think you have to need you need to get more of your attacking players on the ball a bit more and get more confidence within the side for Detroit City. Richard Ballard, we haven't said his name at all throughout the broadcast, and he's a special player. Be a next factor for the Detroit City side. 21st minute, Blanchett in net. Paul's been wire to wire with the team this season, so his record identical to the club's. Nine, six, and six goals against average at 110. The save percentage at 761 with eight clean sheets on the resume. Feels like week in and week out, you see some highlight reel save made by him as a USL Championship Save of the Week contender. He erases a lot of mistakes if need be. So that's why I was pretty curious about the guys in net, how they'd match up with each other and see if they'd raise the stakes tonight. But a couple minutes in and a goal past each of them. Great ball. This one played through. Onside looks to be the case. Blanchett comes off his line, a wide open net. No connection being made though. Wow, uh, Morris was left alone by his lonesome on the right-hand side. That pass just missed a beat over his right foot. I think something that you Carroll brings in this back line, just the ability to unlock defenses. Picks his head up, understands Reese Williams has the ability just to play off the shoulder to Eric Murad. And I think he's caught between two minds. Does he go for goal? Does he sweat it across into Morris? He goes for goal, just pulls it a bit too wide. But if he's swept it across, it's a bit too heavy. It's something that if you're Oakland Roots, if you have time and space on the two center backs, you have to have the ability to draw. They're so good at picking out passes between Carroll and Lewis, two center backs for Detroit City. Yeah, Williams out wide to the left again. Williams would love a reprieve on that pass. It was just a little bit too much pace on it. Intercept here. Been an interesting match so far. It's been pretty loose for the most part. That contact near midfield. It's one thing we have not experienced a lot of tonight is the physicality is so I was picking himself off the deck. You know, at this point in the season, how would you evaluate Oakland with where they're at in the standings? I mean, the wins, the losses, they're one thing, but what do your eyes tell you? 
a team that understands what's asked of them. I think that was going to be the big question mark for Nel Delgado taking over Juan Garagos and Phoenix. Is he going to change things? Is he going to keep the same game plan and principles that Juan Garagos instilled? Yes, he's changed a little bit, but most likely with the wingbacks, it's still the same kind of feel. And I understand that I feel like this Oakland Roots side has a very comfortable sense about them. They mm. understand what's asked of them. They understand that it's more of a collective. There's no I in this Oakland side. You talk about last year, you have Otar Carlson scoring 22 goals, 20 plus goals, but there really isn't that lethal focal point. It's kind of goals in collective. You have John Rodriguez with nine goals, Linda Mefek with four goals, Daniel with three. The list goes on and on, and everyone's contributing. I think that's something that if you're no Delgado, you have to be extremely pleased about. And I do, I do think they, they are a force to be reckoned with, especially in this Western Conference. And for the Detroit City side, again, you know what you're going to expect. They're very disciplined. They're very hard to break down, very good defensively. And on the attacking phase, they have game changers like this young man on the ball. So if you can get them confident, you can get them playing fluid football, especially in the attacking third, watch out for the Detroit City in this Eastern Conference. Yeah, it's interesting because you talk about the balance that they have in scoring. And more often than not, you feel like some of the teams that have top heavy players that are goal scorers they're at the bottom portion of the standings in usl well it's out east or west the 25th minute ball lost for a moment that shot on goal blanchett with the denial first great stop the second one almost beat him five hole wow blanchett great on the initial stop fortunate there with the second one we talked about the wide players coming alive, especially in that final third. It's a mishap from Danny Barbier, but what a fantastic save. And as Reese Williams elects to put this ball across that six yard box, even better save from Paul Blanchett to get down this down left knee, deny Detroit City a second goal in the evening. Wow, uh, Blanchett, good positioning and fortunate enough for him not cheating. Still tied at 1 1. And I think if you're Oakland Roots now, it's two warning signs. Whether you are Danny Barbier or Tarek Murad, the two center backs are getting bit, beat a bit too easy. One, it was Reese Williams just playing in behind. And this time, it's Richard Ballard just picking the pocket of Danny Barbier. So you need to be a bit cleaner, especially in your positioning and also playing out of the back of the Roots. Now, one thing that's been apparent over the last five to 10 minutes is Detroit's been a lot heavier on the ball than Oakland has. Loose control now by Detroit. Detroit not the cleanest of starts to open up the year, but trying to play their way into a playoff positioning. And we got about two months to go in the regular season, and all bets are off. Well, they didn't roll over here in the first half. Considered a early goal. Got things even three and a half minutes after that. Diaz, a lob. That one's going to be played a little too long. Nobody around for Oakland as they were converging and read near the six. Get a good look at Memo Diaz. Nate Steinwasher gone the distance, much like Blanchett. Six victories on the year, his goals against at one. Save percentage at 763 with seven clean sheets on the resume. Not a lot of steam on that hammer. Stayed out. Diaz looking a long way to read. Read with that sun in his eyes. So near the six, volleyed around, clearly over the head of Steinwasher. Shop the latest Oakland Roots and Soul merchandise by visiting shop.oaklandrootssc.com. Stay fresh, rep Oakland, and spread some love today in all days. Match had some drama early on. Rodriguez for Oakland scoring in the first minute. Carroll in the fifth minute retaliating on a set piece of corner kick for 
Detroit. Normally in different arenas, you'd say those two goals occurred before fans were anywhere near getting into the building, but not so much in Oakland. Fans are here usually about an hour to 90 minutes before anything gets underway. Diaz from well out, that shot hooking wide left. Create all overloads all over the field for the Oakland Roots. Starts on that far side. You just see the movement of Prentice. He pulls out Bryant, and then it comes over to this near side. This run from Daniel is so good because it makes Lewis Levis make a decision. Does he go with the runner? Does he say centrally? As he has that half step to his left hand side, that opens a shooting lane for Memo Diaz, but just pulls it a bit too long. But again, so good for the Oakland Roots, changing the point of attacks and getting their wing backs involved in that final third. Is that overload on one side more to keep the keeper off guard with his vision or more of the defense getting them tangled up? I think it's just creating spaces for your players around you. Mm. Because if the Daniel doesn't make that run, Levis just understands it needs to stay centrally and that closes down that shooting lane. So that secondary movement, that selfless move that I keep talking about, opens up that, pat, that shooting lane for Memo Diaz. And that's something that if you ask any attacking player, Working together, moving off the ball, pulling players out of position is so key in terms of the, the success on the attacking phase of the game. And Diaz is one of those guys we mentioned at the top of the show, worrying about his shot, where it comes from. Rodriguez, another one. Delhi on the pitch, no matter where they are. Oakland trying to change the size of the attack. Rodriguez on the counter leading the charge. 30th minute here from Hayward, California. Oakland and Detroit, members of NISA. Saw each other in the finals a few years ago. Rodriguez was open for a moment. Diaz on the weak side. Diaz plays this one through. Sid Daniel lets it rip on goal. Steinwasher says no. Talk to Noah Zagato about Trayvon Reed and said he's such a special player. The ability to create on his own, the change of pace as Bryant gets his hips a little bit squared. Let's see you later. But this run from John Rodriguez, he pulls out care. There needs to be a secondary movement. Whether you are, said Daniel, you need to be crashing that far post. As this ball circulates back across, it's straight at Steinwasher. But again, we talk about playing off of one each other. As John Rodriguez pulls out Carroll, if you crash at that far post, it's 2-1 open roots. But as you have the ability to look for that cutback ball, that closes down the angle, and that gives Steinwasher the lane at his near post. Great communication, but also the ability to play with each other week in and week out does a lot for chemistry reasons. And I think this back line for Detroit City having a very difficult time just picking and choosing which players to run with and also when to stay compact and stay connected, whether it is Memo Diaz, whether it is Prentice on this far side. And then it's the Daniel and Trayvon Reed underneath Johnny Rodriguez. You need to have a bit more communication and also having a very difficult time dealing with the pressure. Picked off there is Daniel had it, could not control it. He gets it back, but because Diaz, the hog tie of a defender in Detroit, that was exactly the case. So a lot of fireworks here in the 32nd minute. Johnny Rodriguez on one end, Stephen Carroll on the other end. Oakland playing a couple nights ago and we were rather curious to see how the legs would be for Oakland, given the fact they are at home. A little bit of a lift from the hometown faithful and Oakland trying to attempt to counter right now. Couldn't pull it off. It's just not clean enough at the moment for Detroit City, especially in the final third. Doing extremely well, getting themselves into attacking opportunities, but not having that final execution, and that's something that Trevor James was quick to point out on a phone call as well, saying, look, we're gonna create chances, but how clinical can we be on the day in our own attacking 18-yard box in 33 minutes in? He's gonna want a bit more in that phase of the game. Rad, nice little chip for Diaz. 
trying to get to that ball and it'll be won by Detroit City. So flurries early on things have certainly cooled off a little bit. Nate Stanwasher trying to do his thing on the opposite end of the pitch for Detroit. Already conceded one, doesn't want to see another one get past him, but it's some dangerous moments for Oakland. Here in the 34th minute. Shots right now favoring Oakland, six to four the advantage. Oddly enough, though, even with the shots on goal advantage, Detroit has had more on net, four to two. Expected goals, Detroit closer to one than Oakland is, 0.7 to 0.4. The possession being owned right now, at least for the time being, by Oakland, 52% to 48 for Detroit. What does it all mean? Uh, just a 1 1 score for the time being. Played long. Diaz couldn't settle it off the header. Rad. Gave that up, but controlled nicely. Non A. On the opposite way. Johnny Rodriguez trying to hover around the six. They're waiting for some reinforcements. So Daniel's over there, Prentice as well. The opposite way, and that ball going slicing off the right foot of Sedano. He'd love to have a mulligan there. Lee's preferred right foot. Ball's coming up over you. You need to get clean contact and then just put it into the mixer, and good things will happen. Just takes his eye off of it. We're getting a very good look of what. Trayvon Reed is all about how silky and how slippery he can be 1v1 on that far side for the Oakland Roots. He's been so successful just beating his individual mark 36 minutes in. The sun continue to set here on the pitch. Will make things a lot easier for each keeper. Rad, they have to get rid of this thing in a hurry. Williams converging on him. Good job though by Morad getting out of that traffic. And now a tight quarter. Somehow Oakland maintained possession. Diaz up front to Sedano. Got numbers. Had a three on two for a moment. Sedano with a nice pivot. Can't maintain possession. A nice run to the end. Williams here in the counter, head up all the way. Levis. and a giveaway there for Detroit. I'd like to see a lot more from Detroit, at least with possession there. I mean, of the first couple of minutes, they really haven't put Oakland on edge. Everything has been centrally in the center part of the field, just between the lines. No one's really running in behind and stretching this Oakland Roots back line. And you asked Danny Barbier, Neville Hackshaw, and Tarek Murad, 38 minutes in, how many times have you turned around and chased after your own goal? The answer is going to be zero. And if you ask any center back, it makes life very easy just stepping to that middle third, moving from left to right, and staying compact. So I just want to give a different look going forward for 
Detroit City, but you have to give credit to Morris. He's there on an island. He's working extremely hard trying to fight for every 50-50 ball. And then the secondary action, that's when you want Mario Suarez, Maxi Rodriguez, Job to come alive and pick up those balls in more advanced positions. Yeah, Reed pivoting up. Rodriguez with a nice move. Rodriguez left by his lonesome. We'll see if he teases up. Give it up to Diaz. Diaz with the strike. Steinwasher gobbles it up. Not the threat there in that shot. Would you have liked Rodriguez to keep it? It's all about decision making. So as he turns the corner here, it's a nice little swivel of the hips. He has so many options, but you want to make a center back step off his line and make him make a decision. As he plays into the path of Memo Diaz, Levis understands if I just shift over and close down that space into low percent of shot. You have to give credit to Detroit City, emergency defending to get about five, six players on the ball, deny a transition moment for the Roots. So Daniel taking some contact to the back of the head. Make sure you're hanging with us at the end of the first half. We'll have stats, highlights, some news and notes around USL championship schedules and a whole lot more. It's coming up at the break. In the festive first half of ball here from Oakland. Six wins in the season for Detroit, nine for Oakland. And the season is past the halfway point. Close out the month of July, and all of a sudden, August is here, and the playoffs loom. Reed overstepped that. Nane. Joseph surveying the land. Sedanium. Nobody home. It looked like Rodriguez not on the same page with Nane. Exactly what I'm talking about, David. Just and Morris is just there on an island, one v four. Very difficult to find his feet. Here's Steinwasher. Want to slow things down just a tiny bit. Dangerous moment. Diaz with the intercept. Diaz with the left foot. No. Cedeno. Cedeno trying to sell. Nice move by Cedeno. Bites on Steinwasher outside. Nane shoots Steinwasher on the goal line. Well, Steinwasher fortunate to be on that ball. He lost his footing, but held his ground. Give credit to Cedeno. The composure once he gets himself in that final third. Do you understand if I make my defender miss not once but twice? And as he throws this ball to the path of Joseph Nani, there's information on it. He needs to hit it first time. I think if you're Joseph Nani, you hit with your right foot. Gives you a better angle. Closes down the angle. You let it come across with your left foot right into the path of Steinwasher once again. I mean, Steinwasher, he's been massive between the sticks for Detroit City. Those are some vulnerable movement, movements from Steinwasher because any kind of misstep or a cheat the opposite way, it's behind him. But I think if you're Joseph Nani with the experience and the quality that you have, you step into that and you just rope the thing with your right foot. Close your hips and try to, whether it's low and hard to that far post or just high into that near post, it puts Steinwasher under a lot of pressure. This one played through and Intercepting it on A. I'm curious on stoppage time here in this first half, have not had. A lot of lulls in action. Physicality's been decent, but not overbearing, where we've had our lead official, Brad Jensen, getting involved. Levis. Suarez was asking for some service. It did not come his way. Shot elevating it. Levis, great head fake. Levis with the left foot. Not the right idea, at least with the left. Right would have been more prosperous. Tries it a second time, carrying it around. 
goes up sky high. Bouncing around, Hagshaw will intercept that for a brief moment and now cleared. A little physicality there. Lewis and Rodriguez, a bit of an entanglement for a moment. This little love tap from John Rodriguez to the backside of Lewis. I only laugh because I know you saying love tap. <laughs> Your love tap's a little bit different than other guys. <laughs> it's a nice little matchup we have between John Rodriguez and the two center backs for Detroit City. Quality at the highest order on both sides of the ball. And a healthy amount of respect exchange as well, I can imagine. Oh, Brian will hold up for a moment. Forty fifth minute. We'll check and see what the stoppage time will be like. Bryant with a quick chip peeled off. Uh, running around as Prentice is trying to get in front of that pass. Hackshaw with the left foot will put that thing away. And that'll be a corner kick here in the closing seconds of this first half for Detroit. And as this game has progressed in this first half, you're you start to see Ballard get on the ball a bit more for Detroit City. We talked about him moments ago. He's so special. He's so good 1v1. He's had a very good career within the USL Championship. So he can be a game changer and an X factor. If you get him confident, especially in around that 18 yard box. Get a good look from Blanchett's spot. This one bending around. So Daniel heads it away. Three minutes of stoppage time. A little curious about that. It's a play by Hackshaw. Curious in the three minutes. Well, not referees, David. Shots right now favoring Oakland seven to four. Shots on goal 4-2 in favor of Detroit City. Possession 52% for Oakland, a 48 for Detroit. Both goals scored in the first five minutes of this contest. Not what we expected, but nevertheless, really fireworks. Get you an idea of what's happening around USL Championship as well. Some updated scores. Games that are still continuing and others that have come to a close. <laughs> Leave us here. Leave us wanted to get it back. He did not. Reese. Williams looking the opposite way, and now Daniel will see if he can attack on the counter. He's got some wheels, played that one a little too far ahead. Rodriguez. Stretch pass for Sedano, but Sedano can't get to it. He's marked off. Really good positioning there from Lewis. Uh, Sean Rodriguez just tries to play into the path of that man around the corner. Cuts down the angle, calmly and securely, just plays it back into Steinwasher. But they've been so good, the two center backs for Detroit City, just putting out fire after fire. As far as, ooh, trying to put that ball into a tight window. Hackshaw with a fine intercept. Rodriguez, the player draped all over his back, lost the handle, is asking for a call and did not get it. Opportunity here, Bledgeshaw with a great stop. Just before the first half expires, Blanchett with some highway robbery. We're still tied at one apiece.
nobody's surprised. This one volleyed around. And again, Oakland scrambling around a little bit. It all started because of the takeaway. Ben Jensen, the lead official, blows the whistle. Half time is where we're at now in Hayward, California. Go back to Blanchett. Stop, they'll be in before the end of the first half. Turning your defense into offense. It's a foul question mark. Detroit City don't care, but this first touch from Ben Morris is so good to play off the shoulder of Neville Hackshaw, and he does everything right. Low and hard to the far post, but what a fantastic save once again for Paul Blanchett. Give credit to Hackshaw, not giving up on the play, because if he doesn't react, Maxi Rodriguez is there to put into the back of the net. That man right there, Johnny Rodriguez, got the fireworks started early on. Goal in the first minute of action. Overall, good half a ball. And I think if you're the Oakland Roots, you have to be very comfortable and very confident with just the possession that you've instilled in this first half. But you're asking for that final bit of quality once you get that final third. And for Detroit City, against the run of play, yes, but you've been very good defensively, compact, and trying to catch Oakland Roots in, the, in transition moments. This next 45 is going to be very interesting. The tactical matches up that both of these managers instill at halftime. Teams ahead of the locker room make some hydrations and some adjustments. Come up and let us out. We'll get you some first half stats, some highlights, and take a look around USL Championship. All game right now is tied at the end of 45 minutes of play. 1-1 is the score. We'll be back. Eating a balanced diet and being physically active are two of the most important things you can do to be healthy at any age. Fruits, vegetables, and lean proteins can help control your weight and prevent heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. Regular exercise can help boost your mood, digestion, and sleep. That's why Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots encourage you to eat right and get active. For additional healthy tips, visit www.oaklandrootssc.com slash anthem. Wouldn't it be great to have delicious, healthy meals delivered right to your door? No planning, shopping, or prepping. And what if your delivery was full of plant-based, fresh ingredients that truly nourish and fuel your body? Try Thistle. Our in-house chefs create a new menu each week for you to choose from before it arrives ready to eat. No prep needed. And for a limited time, you can save $100 off your first four weeks. So go ahead and autopilot your diet. Get started today at jointhistle.com. My name is Ed, and I live in San Leandro, California. I've always been concerned about being prepared and being on a medical baseline where I have a CPAP machine. I was wondering, will I be able to keep that thing going? I got an email from East Bay Community Energy, and they mentioned a rebate about getting an electrical generator. So I went for it. East Bay Community Energy has been great. They're doing a job to help our environment, and I think they're really supportive. right now and brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming health care by improving the health of our local communities everywhere. Oakland Roots, Detroit City, bottled up at one apiece with Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm David Gascon. Glad you can be with us on a Saturday night. A lot of action in the first half. All the goals scored in the first five minutes and Ricky the upcoming menu for Oakland. I think it's going to be very interesting for Nelo Delgado just how he approaches this meet of the schedule because you're going to Charleston Battery, to New Mexico, to Lynn Family Stadium in Lou City. So very difficult places to play. We'll start with that Charleston Battery side. Ben Pierman has completely changed that club. And then you're welcoming the Switchbacks and Sacramento Republic, two teams that are very difficult to play, whether it's home, whether it's away. So really interesting meet of the schedule for Noah Delgado. But it all starts in this next 45 minutes here at home against Detroit City. And for the visitors, Detroit City, look at their schedule the next five games. All of them are obviously critical, but you need to take care of business in the East. And again, you're playing at home at Keyworth for a lot of them, so that's going to be good if you're no, if you're 
Trevor Noah, excuse me, you have Charleston Battery again. Ben Pierman changed that side. Las Vegas Lights, one win on the year, so you need to get three points. And then you're looking at teams that are above you. Memphis Knight have won. Miami FC, that just won again tonight. Two wins on the bounce for the team in South Beach. So again, very difficult and really important part of the schedule for Detroit City to create separation from yourself in that playoff position to the, the teams underneath you. And right now where it stands with so 23 points, but looking up at a couple teams, they are within striking distance. So is Oakland. Oakland roots right now on in the top mark in the West. They need them three points tonight. We'll see if they can capture that. 45 minutes in the books. We're tied at one. Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league, the USL Super League, built for the future of women's soccer, bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. There's nothing like the support of your teammates. When it comes to your health, Anthem Blue Cross is here for you. If you're enrolled in a Medi-Cal health plan at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, then you may need to renew your coverage or find a new plan that's right for you. Anthem offers budget-friendly individual and family plans, some starting at $0. Renew your coverage or explore other options. Learn more at remaincovered.com ca. And we're at the break right now. Fans in attendance, all smiles, drinking their suds and whatnot. Halftime report brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming health by improving the health of all our local communities everywhere. Oakland Roots, Detroit City, tied at one apiece. We'll take a look right now, Ricky, at our news and notes around USL Championship. There's a lot of things moving about across the land. What say you? I think for Tampa Bay Rowdies, Nikki Law, First manager, I think that's really interesting because the Rowdies have been so good at turning players into coaches. So obviously, Nikki Law, hats off to you. Brilliant opportunity, and they won against FC Tulsa, so even better there. Monterey Bay signed Rafael Baca. That's going to be very interesting to see how quickly he can insulate into that system that Frank Yap likes to instill. And then Charleston Battery, a new number one. They welcomed Pittsburgh Riverhounds earlier this week and just waxed them 3 1. So Ben Pierman doing everything right in South Carolina. Yeah, Charleston stole a couple of points away from Miami a couple weeks ago, and they just continue to be lights out in Eastern Conference. You mentioned Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh got behind the eight ball early and scored back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back goals, and they sealed the deal 4-2, doubling up Memphis. And much needed because they lost 3-1, 3-1 back-to-back, and that's something yeah. that if you're Bob Lilly, you didn't take kindly to. But Miami FC, two wins on the bounce. Loose City back on winning ways in that rivalry at Lynn Family Stadium. And then RGV, 5-2 against El Paso. <laughs> Wilmer Cabrera has his fingerprints and his pulse on the locker room. And Birmingham Legion taking care 
of the number one seed in overall of USL Championship. It's like a crapshoot these days, I swear. I don't know what That's you're going to get. That's why you love it, though. <laughs> That's exactly it, right? <laughs> Western Conference in real time right now is Sacramento to the top dog, followed by San Antonio, and then there's Oakland. But you just see how tight around that playoff. So you're looking at 8, 9, 7, 29, 29, 29, 29. Every point matters as we're getting into the back end of this 2023 campaign and every single point on the road matters as well. So again, you have to pick up points on the road and you have to win when you're at home. So again, very interesting to see how this is all going to play out. What was good for Johnny Rodriguez, he scored the game's first goal in minute number one. The fans, young and old and everywhere in between, were still delighted, but an equalizer from Stephen Carroll three minutes after that ball game right now tied at one apiece. We'll be back. If Damian Lillard accepted his spot at the end of the bench, he never would have been at the rec center before it opened. If he listened to those who overlooked him, he never would have heard his name called as a first round pick. And if he let six all-star selections go to his head, he never would have had the heart to give back to the streets that shaped him. That's the fighting spirit. That's what makes a lion. Modelo, root for those with a fighting spirit. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Wouldn't it be great to have delicious, healthy meals delivered right to your door? No planning, shopping, or prepping. And what if your delivery was full of plant-based, fresh ingredients that truly nourish and fuel your body? Try Thistle. Our in-house chefs create a new menu each week for you to choose from before it arrives ready to eat. No prep needed. And for a limited time, you can save $100 off your first four weeks. So go ahead and autopilot your diet. Get started today at jointhistle.com. The mission of Fertile Ground Works is of teach, grow, give. Teach people how to grow food for themselves, grow it, and then give it away to people who need it. We grow about 25,000 pounds of food a year. We also operate something we call the Sustainable School Garden Program. Teachers ask us for help setting up a garden on their own campuses. East Bay Community Energy was nice enough to give us $2,500 that we were able to focus on one of our school gardens. And I am truly grateful. Tonight's match presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross, UCSF Health, and Modelo. See the giant moon there showing itself from Hayward, California, as you see a picturesque Saturday night from the Bay Area with Ricky Lopez Espen. I'm David Gascon. Thanks for joining us tonight. Ricky, let's dip into the first half highlights, shall we? Don't blink because it comes really <laughs> quick right off the kickoff. You start to see overextending yourself in the back for Detroit City, but watch the top of your screen as John Rodriguez peels off the shoulder. It's a loose touch here from Trayvon Reed, but to create something out of nothing as a striker. Picks up a set. No one closes down the space as Reed pulls out a center back just unleashes a rocket to set the tempo and the tone for the Oakland Roots. Ah, but a counter punch. Set pieces, set pieces, set pieces. Maybe there is a lot of sun, but again, if you're the Oakland Roots, you have to be better defending your own box. You can't let a ball bounce in. Carroll makes no mistake about the finish. Easy finish for the player, that quality, and Detroit City draw even. But Trayvon Reed, I thought he was massive in the first half. The ability to beat players 1v1. It's a great ball that's begging for someone to get on the back post of it, but straight at Steinwasser. He's been massive for Detroit City between the sticks. Yeah, we've had a lot of action the first half, but the keepers have been busy, despite the fact that one have gotten past each of them. Look at the transition game here, though, for Detroit. And just a touch to put it into space because he understands his movement. Off the corner of Neville Hackshaw, Ben Morris, striker, clinical, good finish, but even better save for Paul Blanchett. Take a look now at the first half stats in this contest. 
Shots favoring in favor of Oakland, but Detroit more on target. What does what do the numbers tell you? I think if you're at Detroit City, transition moments are going to be key. How quickly can you turn your defensive efforts into attacking opportunities and try to catch out this Oakland root side because they want to be expansive. They want to commit numbers forward. So can you be clinical on the break, especially through Suarez and Morris? And for no Noah Delgado and the Oakland Roots, keep changing the point of attack. Prentice and Diaz were so active at creating overloads on all wide areas and testing the shape of Detroit City. All right, enough chatter about the numbers, and we'll now pivot and go to the second half. What kind of adjustments would you make if you're Noah Delgado? I think you have to be more clinical. Just you're getting you're getting so many opportunities, especially in around that 18 yard box, but finding the back of the net, that's gonna put the bow on the gift here for the Yoga Roots and for Detroit City, just get your center midfielders on the ball a bit more. Max Rodriguez, extremely quiet. We haven't seen that relationship between him and Dario Suarez quite enough for Trevor James' liking. Second half is now underway. Detroit and Oakland. Oakland going from right to left. Detroit will be moving from left to right. And their light kits today, the white and the green. Not always the most visible to the naked eye. Rodriguez with an intercept. Let's see if he has some numbers. Rodriguez into a delicate corner, earns a corner. This corner kick powered by East Bay Community Energy. East Bay Community Energy providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more. See who takes the delivery on this. So Daniel match off. That heel kick never came to fruition. Haven't had a lot of activity for Oakland when it comes to the set pieces. Hackshaw from well outside. That one never had a chance. But how often does Hackshaw have an opportunity towards target? <laughs> he knows he should be getting that on target. He hits it so well. A lot of contact. But his balance is all off. That's why you see go up and over the bar. But you'd love to see the confidence from the center back stepping up. What's the furthest goal you've ever scored in your career? College or professional? Halfway. Halfway? Was it at night or during the day? Night. All right, I'm going to have to YouTube that sometime. <laughs> I'm going to have to YouTube it and look at the comments. Oh. Because there's always those great comments asking what in the world the keeper was doing, but how you get beat from that far out. Now, was your intent to put it on target? 100%. 100%. All right, fair enough. Well, that'll be a moment we can earmark for later on in the evening. Some contact there by Michael Bryant. A little bit of disgust. I'll say the one thing in defense of this match, we haven't talked a lot about Brad Jensen, the lead official. He hasn't been active, which is a great thing. Hackshaw here. Hackshaw, Barbier. They've been active, but more so in just keeping things in front of Paul Blanchett. Ninth minute from the Bay Area. Oakland, nine victories on the season. Six defeats, six draws. And for Detroit, they have six victories on the year, but 11 defeats. But man, they were driving, looked like without brakes really on the season with a punctured tire and a cracked windshield. And then all of a sudden they woke up. And they have rectified themselves in the Eastern Conference. And they're what I consider a live dog. They're a team that'll probably come in against the top tier teams in the Eastern Conference as a considerable underdog, but they can beat you on any night. Pierce through for a moment. Steinwasher comes out to wipe that away. I mean, we have the opportunity to talk to every single head coach around the USL Championship. And you ask about Detroit City, you get hard working, hard to break down discipline. They know exactly what they're doing. They know their game plan. When you have a team that has all of that above, 
makes it very difficult to beat. And I think if you walk into the USL Championship, especially if you have to go to Keyworth, that's going to be a big head scratcher and frustration for any head coach because this Detroit City side, they have the ability to produce magic on the attacking phase, but defensively, only 22 goals allowed on the season, and that's very good. And that's something that you come to expect from a Trevor James managed team. Which has to be that much more frustrating, right? That you could shut down so many people, but yet the goal production's not there? And again, we had we talked to him and he was like, look, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Only 16 goals on the year. Mm. And with the talent that he has on his roster, you look at the talent that's on the field right now, you should be expecting more goals and more often. We'll see if that comes at any point. Morris with a great look towards target early on. Morris between two defenders. Not the third time around, though. Hack show the fine play to get around him and collect that, depossess him of it. But it's a little instance like that, David. As Morris gets around the corner, it's 3v1. You need someone to provide some support, whether it's just someone he can just drop it into and spin off, or someone making the run to pull out to fill Hackshaw. It's far too easy for the center back of the Yoke Roots just to pick his pocket because there's too many players of the Yoke Roots asking questions and putting him in a very tricky situation. Seemed like it was a duplicate performance there with Ballard. Yeah. Fans here in Oakland have been rowdy throughout. Engaged first couple seconds after Rodriguez scored his ninth goal of the season. Rodriguez scoring that goal and getting the fans pumped up early on. Nane with the intercept. Re with his first assist of the year. trying to turn the corner. What are they going to give this ball to? It's going to go to Oakland. Wolfgang Prentice appearing in his eighth match of the season for Oakland, making his fourth start of the year. So changes amongst the starting 11 for Oakland. It has not been this way from the opening get-go to now. Something Noah Delgado did mention to us earlier this week. He feels like his club can get to a higher level. Which I feel like is not coach speak. Certain guys maybe, but not for Noah Delgado. Shots 12-5 in favor of Oakland. Daniel backs off. That one coming awfully close towards going into the net. Steinwasher with a tightrope walk on the goal line. Great intent for Memo Diaz to put Steinwasher on high alert. Now, have you scored a goal from that angle on a corner? I was never a corner kick taker. All right. <laughs> Had to ask since you scored one from about 100 yards out. Every dog has his day. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. 1-1 one, one the score here. These teams familiar with each other in Nisa, but it's a great below where they're at now in USL Championship. Dynamics of USL Championship also changed this year with Certain teams no longer a part of it. And that might also change in years to come with the idea of relegation being floated around. That would be quite the scene. Gomez. Rodriguez nearly forced off that ball. Good job for Rodriguez, at least maintain possession for the time being, but was intercepted. Detroit looking to approach. Barbier gets in front of that one. A lot more physicality and Brad Jensen letting these guys play on. 
A dangerous moment here. That'll result in a corner kick for Detroit. A very difficult time dealing with this pressure from Detroit City, the Oakland Roots. Trying to be too cute playing out of the back, but give credit to Levis and Reese Williams on that far side. Closing down extremely quick, sniffing out half opportunities and putting a lot of pressure on this man and his defensive unit. Ballard with the assist on the corner kick early on. Carroll with the goal in the fifth minute. Ballard, high bender Blanchett. Selling that one, and he acknowledges as much. Taking some heavy contact. I think that was friendly fire, but nevertheless, Carroll running the opposite way. Just a little bit of contact there, but Paul Blanchett definitely makes the most of it. Is that Oscar worthy? <laughs> it's up there, that's for sure. All right, fair enough. Carroll did not. Take lightly to it. A little jawing after the fact. Leading man in a drama. <laughs> Paul Blanchett. All jokes aside, a man that has etched his name in Oakland Roots history. Well received and liked in these parts of town. Reed. Couldn't maintain possession on it. Nane jumping up into the play. We'll see if a reward comes. Rodriguez. Cedeno so and Diaz working that right side. Detroit not breaking down though defensively. changes on either side just yet. Diaz wants it, and Diaz has it. Diaz trying to maintain possession. Doing a lot of work there just to hold and serve, and now Detroit trying to get this thing into harm's way. Fans getting a little antsy at the moment. Barbier. Nane, opposite side. This one delivered in, a lot of steam on it, but Steinwasher had an angle on it. Celebrate your next event with Oakland Roots. Groups of 10 or more can take advantage of specially priced drinks, tickets, enjoyable, memorable experiences, including player meets and greets, the parade of champions, playing on the field at halftime, and much, much more. To reserve your group experience, contact us at tickets at rootssc.com or call 510-488-1144 today. Fifty-eighth minute. Two goals scored in this match occurring in the first five minutes. That does not mean the match has been a bore. A stretch of the imagination on that. Both keepers have been busy. Been running around. Trying to stop a few shots that were earmarked for special angles of the net. Or beer. Some miscommunication there. Getting in the right spaces, the Oakland Roots, especially through Wolfgang Prentice and Memo Diaz, not having the ability just to find them. It'd be clinical and clean enough to create overloads on wide areas. But give credit to Detroit City, how good they've been defensively, not giving an inch to this Oakland Roots side to penetrate them, especially centrally. Everything has been around the corners. There's some, been some dangerous moments, but you feel like Detroit's done a good job of packing things inside the 18. So good at defending their own 18-yard box. The width of the 18 especially. 
But you look at the Oak and Root's attacks, everything has been through Memo Diaz. So Daniel on that far side, on this near side, Trayvon Reed, Wolfgang Prentice, nothing has been in behind of Carroll and Lewis. And that's something that we keep talking about. Trevor James at its finest. On the approach here. Traffic near the six, headed away by Barbier. Nicely, we'll see what the transition game does here. Pushing forward is Reed. Now Reed will hold up and wait for reinforcements. It's really good work there from Job. Slow the game down, don't foul. But as you make Trayvon Reed play negative, you see the numbers come back and get into their defensive unit for Detroit City. Little things like that, especially for a center midfielder, are so important at reading moments throughout 90 minutes. Quick hesitation, Rodriguez. Oh, Rodriguez, you saw him wanting to tee that one up. Just couldn't settle it down. Reed is there. Reed misjudged it. Now, Nate trying to hold his ground, but that'll be a foul. Oakland 9, 6, and 6. Detroit 6, 11, and 5. Big three points coming up. Who can capture it? Won't be detrimental for Detroit only to get one, but going on the road, they'd love to get three. Oakland unbeaten in the last 12 and scoring first. They did here tonight. But Detroit countering moments after that. Nane using his size, but could not elevate and maintain it. Rodriguez. Detroit just looking for those open gaps to counter. A lot more patient than we'd see in a lot of teams, right? It's a mat mature sense from this Detroit City side, especially in the second half. Not forcing the issue, playing what the game gives you. The ball circulation has been good. Once you get to situations like this, this is when you need to speed it up, be more decisive. Almost like they're trying to lull the opposition to sleep, right? Grace Williams has played well tonight. So is Blanchette. Paul with four stops in the evening. Blanchette coming into this one, the league leader in saves. Ryan does here in this long throw in. Ooh, Bryant just couldn't hold his ground there. 63rd minute. This certainly has a different feel than the first half. A bit more methodical, very cagey. When a game is like this, especially in the second half, it's all a matter of managing critical moments in your own 18-yard box and your defensive 18-yard box. Good spot there from Suarez. But again, he's been extremely quiet, Suarez. 64 minutes in, has not said his enough nearly as much. What's up with that? I think just the spaces that he's picked up. I haven't been able to find him. Take a look at the top of your screen, just playing off the shoulder of Gomez and Joseph Nane. You can break that line get him on the half turn facing forward. A lot of success to be had with the movement from Ben Morris because I think he's been spectacular, just off the ball, doing all the dirty work. Just had the service that he would like. Ballard picking up the assist on Stephen Carroll's goal, his second goal of the season.
Johnny Rodriguez getting the first for Oakland tonight. Marie with the helper there. 65th minute here and things have certainly slowed down to a modest beat. As you look at Dario Suarez. Quiet, all matched up against Oakland. Time standing Sacramento, San Antonio out west, one and two, followed by Oakland. El Paso in fourth, followed by San Diego. Rodriguez will go down, that'll be a foul. Oakland has won three straight. Never done four in a row, though. Be a great time to accomplish that feat after this match tonight. We'll take on Charleston Battery. It's next Friday night, August the 4th, from Patriot Point. It's a great scene in Charleston, by the way. That's a good scene for any adult. It doesn't <laughs> matter. I say as an adult, right? Like 18 years old, 25. 40, whatever you may be, Charleston's a great scene. I mean, that's what makes USL Championship so interesting, just the different types of stadiums, the different types of environments that we've come, and every team has really made that advantage their own. I mean, you look at the Silicon Root side, especially here, a towering bleacher on that far side, nonstop cheering, nonstop music willing their boys to go on and also for Detroit City Keyworth they keep talking about how hostile how close those fans are to make life very difficult for the opposing sides as we see Ryan Hurt coming on for Trayvon Reed substitution powered by East Bay Community Energy East Bay Community Energy providing green power at low rates visit ebce.org to find out more You just see the spacing for Detroit City. Dario Suarez in a very good pocket off the shoulder. Joseph Nane, if you find him, Tark Murad's already out of position. So little moments like that, if you can find your number 10, you can unlock this back line for the Oakland Roots. 68th minute, first change being made of the night. Read out. Watch out here. Sensitive moment. That one was rolling away and intercepted. Hackshot pushes, pushes this one forward, but that one's given back. Miller didn't really have a good sense, and that was a interesting challenge, needless to say. Carroll with the takeaway, though. Suarez trying to make a move, a pivot. Dario eluding one defender. Pushes it off to the left-hand side. See Suarez not moving around without the ball, though. This one play the opposite way. The header blend check got the right hand on it. That almost pushed everyone to sleep. Who was playing up here? And Morad just punts that thing away. Which is very methodical the way that they're going about they're attacking this back line for the Oakland Roots. As this ball gets shifted onto that back post, Bryant does everything right. Heads it back into a traffic area, begging for someone to get on the end of it. But it's Paul Blanchett that answers every single question asked of him once again. From a sharp angle, that strike from near the six, blocked in the way through. Ballard gave it up nicely, and I think he was expecting it back. That strike never had a chance. Locking composure in that instance there, Joe. You have, you have Levis or Reese Williams on that far side. If you just played it back into them, you can circulate and get numbers in around that 18-yard box. Your balance is all off. That's why you see go up and over the bar because your head's leaning back. Very threatening, especially in the second half, Detroit City, picking and choosing their times when 
to get their outside backs involved in the final third. So if you're Danny Barbier, Prentice, Memo Diaz, and Tarek Murad, the communication and the ability to pass players off is going to be really key. Two players elevating in a vulnerable spot. Suarez called for the foul. It's a 50-50 ball. I guess when we have a moment, I floated it earlier, and I guess I could now have you jump on it now. The relegation thought. Where do you sit on that? Because you are. I'm all for it. Are you? I think it's it's going to give something different to North American North sports? American football and sports. I think there's so much arguments to be had. Well. Well, there it is, let's say, for example, MLS. Player teams that are constantly at the bottom, they don't feel any pressure because they know they're going to be in the league. And also you look at overseas, just the, the passion and the competitive spirit that understand that there's money on the line. Yeah. If you're in Division One, if you're Division Two, it's a massive difference. So that in and of itself, the competitive spirit for players to understand, I want to play a top flight football, that's massively different. But the question I have is, what does it look like in terms of Yes, there's X amount of teams in USL Championship right now. We're talking about bringing three stages, League 1, League 2, League 3. Who's going to drop down to League 3? Who's going to stay in League 2? So I think that's a question mark that many people have. But also, you look at some teams in League 1 that maybe don't have the capacity to bring 10,000 people to, to a, a game then don't have the capabilities to produce matches like that. So I, I think there's a lot to be worked out. But I think it would just be massive for the game of football, massive for USL Championship and USL as a whole. Um, and it's going to be voted on pretty here soon. But I think yeah, I, I'm all for it. It'd be great because you put a lot of pressure on the ownership groups too. Speaking of pressure, Hatch shot, that was a near goal. Blanchett with one stop. And the second one was to Blanchett as well. Paul Blanchett not giving up an inch. And the veteran keeper in denial mode against Suarez as we look back again. Just so opportunistic. It's a brilliant early ball. It's an almost an uh-oh moment from Neville Hackshaw. But it's a good first touch around the corner from Dario Suarez. Just watch the hips on the end of it. Doesn't get him quick enough around the corner. And it's that man down to his left-hand side like a cat. We, we mentioned him in the open. We've come to expect saves like that, which is not the norm. What a fantastic showing 72 minutes in for the player between the sticks in the Oakland Roots jersey. This corner, not a real threat. Played away by Levis. Splanchet comes out, gets the pause on it. I will never tire watching that guy between the sticks. <laughs> so massive. Yeah. I think we're, we're spoiled in this matchup. Sign Washer and Pablo and Chet, two, not the best goalkeepers. Eastern Conference, Western Conference. Take that out of the question. USL Championship as a whole. I mentioned the idea of relegation. USL also has the Super League with the females, women getting involved. That puts ton of pressure on other leagues in the United States, and WSL comes to mind. But keeps a lot of players domestically here in the United States, and as you all well know, a lot of the women that play in the U.S. at top-tiered universities, there's not a lot of real estate for them to gain professional ground, but now you don't have to worry about going overseas. See at the end of that last instance, Maxi Rodriguez just barking up Dario Suarez, just taking a bit too long on the ball. He had Ben Morris making a terrific run that peels out to the left hand flank. Hasn't been clicking, hasn't been clean enough in terms of Dario Suarez with the quality that he has. But I do think if you're Trevor James, you're very comfortable 74 minutes in, just in your defensive shell, trying to hopefully catch this so can root side cheating on the back end of things. Detroit has never led in this contest. Trying to crack the code again against Blanchett for the second time tonight. And 
Now the question is, will it be another goal for either side in the 75th minute? Her came in earlier for Reed. Slight hesitation and Prentice wanted it, never got it. Or beer. Danny tried to make a move and poorly executed. Morale with a little bit of pressure. Morale doing a good job of putting the onus on Detroit. It looks like be a foul against Oakland Roots. A couple substitutions. Pillai is coming in and Cruz as well. Substitutions powered by East Bay Community Energy. East Bay Community Energy providing green power at low rates. Visit ebce.org to find out more today. And a very active first half, Johnny Rodriguez. Very quiet. Since coming out of the break, but Pillai is the player that we've talked about him. Two goals on the bounce. One at El Paso, one against Las Vegas Lights. Full of confidence at the moment for a number nine, and you're going to see him want to get on the end of things. Very tenacious in the way that he runs. He plays off the shoulder, and it's a no-nonsense number nine. So what does the service look like against Infernal Delgado? With 15 minutes plus remaining in this match for the home side. Are you a little surprised by the output from Rodriguez in the second half? I don't think he got the ball as much as he would like, especially in moments like this to drop down. It's been so sloppy for the Roots. Yeah, here's a dead giveaway for Oakland. This one, those played through in the misconnection. Uh, there's two players on both sides of Blanchett, and that ball went right to him instead. It's a wrong decision in the end for Richard Ballard because Darius Suarez makes a fantastic run. Working, weaving around. Here's Ryan Herr on a sharp angle. Herr played it through the box. Nobody around in a dark kit. Chance here. Pelias outside. Sedanio. Prentice. Sedanio with the left foot off of a defender that almost fouled Twine. Some oohs and ahs, and that was the first real threat of the second half for Oakland. Such a crafty little player for the Oakland Roots. That first touch to get is squared is so important for Cedeno. Plays off the shoulder of Richard Ballard, but as he gets it out in front of him, just pulls it a bit too wide. But this is the run that we mentioned. Darius Suarez, you need to play that ball. It's plain and simple. If you don't play that ball, you should be getting a shot on target. You see the frustration because he plays the run off the shoulder of Danny Barbier. If you have enough skill just to run into the path, it's a 1v1 with Paul Blanchett. And those are little instances that if you're Trevor James, you're going to watch on film and look at Richard Ballard and says, you know you should be doing better in that instance. Chances don't come too often. In the 78th minute for Detroit, loving to capture a go-ahead goal. Couple substitutions made so far by Oakland. Nothing just yet for Detroit and Trevor James. Oakland winners of three straight. Detroit trying to seize that snap a skid for them. This one volleyed around a little bit. Played away at the last second. Good job by Daniel Gomez. And Detroit wins here tonight. Snap a skid. Our string of three straight victories. This one played through and Blanchett will come out. Watch out. Quick counter. So Daniel. Elias. Elias with some good energy to coming into this contest. 
roots are back home on August the 19th at Cal State University East Bay versus Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. Limited single game tickets are still available. Purchase yours now before they sell out. To secure your tickets, visit us at oaklandrootssc.com forward slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Couple changes here for Detroit. Adrian Billhart. O'Neill Fisher also coming into the fray. And Fisher spent some time in the MLS. 89 matches with Minnesota. Richard Ballard's nights over with. He was good. Could have had a lot of brighter of a moment here in the second half without a miscue. Those glimpses of what Richard Ballard can produce individually with the ball at his feet. The next step in his progression, especially in a Detroit City uniform, is just production. Goals and assists. Changes of the night for Trevor James. Occurring here right around the 80th minute. Gomez, who was pushing forward, couldn't corral that for Oakland. And seen a lot of activity at midfield in the second half. So Daniel on a run here. So Daniel, head up all the way, the feet on the left-hand side, that shot intended for her. Her trying to put it towards target, never made its way through. Steinwasher was coming out. But an injured player, so Daniel, right-hand side, Elias was available. And some rough activity, players just dropping like flies now. It's a wipeout moment. Murad, he got beat though. This one slowly played through. Everyone on the high alert now for Oakland. That strike from well outside of two hopper to Blanchette. And now we check the infirmary. Blanchette's a little hot. I can read lips, but I don't know if I want to say anything that he's saying right now vocally. I think the argument for the Oka Roots is O'Neill well, Fisher Jr., the way that he comes into this collision with Memo Diaz. On first glance, we look like he came over the ball and takes out Memo. So drawing after the fact from Memo Diaz as well. He's not happy with that tackle. Take a look at the sequence again. I've been so impressed with Cedeno, but the extra pass here from her, if he takes extra touches, that gives Levis the ability to get up and close down the space, not once, but twice. And that's Detroit City football at its finest. Mm. Now as this ball rotates over, that's where the challenge, I think, are done by for the Oakland Roots. Levis working that groin on both sides. Man, it does not sit pretty, especially at this time in the match. It is great. You do have a lot of players and a lot of teams with the functionality of monitors across the sternum and the breastplate to monitor mileage, the odometer to see how long they're running for. And the technology that's used now to monitor these guys to make sure they're not going past the point of exhaustion. Tired minds, but also tired muscles. Just so much is required of these players nowadays. They're playing every three days, three days, excuse me, sometimes three games in a week. And you look at the Silk and Roots side, Noel God was quick to point out, we played three games in eight days, we had a week off, and then it's three games in eight days again. Yeah. So how quick can you recover? How quickly can you get your legs underneath you, and I'd argue as well, 
yes, the head coach, the players are important, but the physicals, the physical staff as well is just as important to keep these players healthy, to keep them going. And the data that, that like you mentioned, from the GPS monitors, the heart rate monitors, for every single one of these players, safety comes first and foremost. You had that fine line between getting your legs loose on days off, a little bit of weight training, and at the same time, packing yourself with enough carbohydrates to burn off over the next week, week and a half. And that comes down to the player as well. How professional can you be when you walk off the white lines, eating the right food, drinking the right liquids, and the right amount of rest? Because we've seen it and we've heard it from every single coach in USL Championship, the margin of errors are so thin. Pass here into a dangerous spot. A little bit of backtracking though. How challenging was that for you? You leave Creighton, you're an All-American, and now you become a professional. But it's one thing to be labeled as a professional, it's another to act like a professional. So how hard was the, the off-season exercise and nutrition aspect for you like were you were you good at it to start or was it something you had to grow into going back to we talk about relegation and in USL championship there's also a lot of conversations about the college game mm -hmm. because it's in the fall so you end your college season whether it's December early week of December if you go to the final then you're in preseason in January for MLS side so you get no downtime yeah but for me as I got drafted I think it was the 19th and the 20th, I was doing a fitness test in Salt Lake. So having that short turnaround, you don't really get a break. And then you go into your MLS season or USL season, and it, it is from February all the way into November. So you don't really get a break for over a year for a lot of these players that are coming straight out of college. And a dangerous moment here. Played through. Blanchett was on his back heels. Reese Williams has been terrific. First half and second half, just having the willingness to get on the end of things, to produce something on his own, and just put the ball in a dangerous area. We've seen him play in numerous of different positions for Trevor James, whether it was outside back, whether it was wing back, now he stays at a winger position in the midfield. It just gives you a different look, the work rate, that's a bad turnover. Yeah, it's a terrible turnover. We'll see if it pays off her. Brian. Elias is out wide on the right side, and he coops back in. That strike was null and void. Looked like the ambitions of Cruz. The intent was well, but the execution, not very sound. Going back to the question you asked, David, I think it's also really important that something that people don't understand and underestimate is just the locker room. Yeah. Because when players come in into a new system, into a new league, you have to have that guidance from, I'll speak for the Oakland Roots, of a Jose Nane that's done it at the highest level, that's been in and around the Oakland Roots that know the day-to-day the -day, and as well for Detroit City, Stephen Carroll as well, leaders. So if you can pick their brain and say, okay, what has worked for you to make your career so long and take that, what you do with it, that's up to you. But those little instances to get any sort of advantage as an individual coming into a new locker room and coming into a new league, just pay dividends going forward. This one skied through. Nobody around except for Cruz trying to change the pitch for Oakland. Lewis. 89th minute. A lot slower of a pace here in the second half than the first. The first half, we had three minutes of stoppage time. We'll see what is provided to us here as we near full time. Hackshaw with a great play to intercept that first pass. Second one. Saucered through. Carried around. Fisher was on that right side. Now through again. And right moment here for Rodriguez. Blanchett with the initial stop, the second one. He says no. Only reason this game's tied at 1 1 is because of that man right there. 
Blanchett getting just enough on the first stop. Looked like it carried off the post, but the second one was all him. They pour one out for Paul Blanchett. 90th minute. More drama into the good night. Plenty of Paul Blanchett jerseys in the stands, and they are serenading him. Ricky, take me through this. Maxi Rodriguez hit it so clean and so pure, he cuts across the ball, and that's it bending away from Paul Blanchett. It's a brilliant look at it. Pushes it on to the save. Oh, just top 10, Sports Center top 10 come calling. Now, what's your reaction look like? Reese Williams does everything right, low and hard to that far post. We've seen it once, we'll see it again. The ability to get yourself collective, have the ability to go down to your right hand side, big bear claw away. Massive save. Massive two saves. If he's not on the team of the week, something is wrong in the USL Championship. He's been spectacular, to say the least, for the Oakland Roots tonight. And you hate saying it because Nate Steinwash has been overlooked. He hasn't had a lot of traffic coming his way, especially in the second half. He could have pitched a tent in between his pipes. But it's one thing to make that initial save, but that double save, we've seen that probably three times in the second half of Paul Blanchett. Yeah, Chris Williams, and there's Blanchett. Or excuse me, I beg your pardon, Steinwasher on the opposite end. Nate calming things down. You don't want to give up anything cheap here in stoppage time, especially to that man right there. Pelias, who can fill it up. He's got a couple goals so far this season. After the end of that fact, you saw Maxi Rodriguez just fall to his knees, saying, what else do we need to do to find the back of the net? But the technique that he had on display to hit that ball, put enough English on it to bend it away from Blanchett, that's what makes the save that much more impressive. Get your footing right to get the agility, but also have your, your arm strong enough to not let it find the back of the net, to punch it against the post, and to get up and do it all over again and deny Reese Williams. Many of players around USL have had nightmares because of number 20 in net for Oakland. Roots trying to win it late. Belias ambitious with Sedanio, but that thing would have needed to part the Red Sea. Three defenders for Detroit in a dangerous spot. It's a wrong run from Pelias. He does very well to guide her to make that run across the back line. But you need to peel off. After you peel off, that's when you open gaps. When those gaps open up, that's when you can dart in. Plays it right into the hands of the back line. Once again, give, give credit to Carol, Lewis, Bryant, and Levis. So good and so compact, especially in transition moments. Williams. He goes down, three players colliding. This one chipped in and immediately sent out by Hagshaw. So Daniel. Fans want a little bit more offense, or at least a bigger push. Cruz, he gets hogtied and a defender draped all over his backside. Whistle to Files, Williams, the guilty party. It's tough because Reese has played so well tonight for Detroit, but with the quality chances he's had towards target, you're thinking, man, you could have had a banner affair. And nevertheless, the box score says you're empty. Looks like the final moment of this contest. Been a high wire act by Paul Blanchett. And Oakland, who came out early and often, running around, scored the first goal, but they've been playing a lot of defense here in the second half. Final moment from Diaz into the box. Brad Jensen blows the final whistle, and we have reached full time for the Bay Area. It was theatrical. It was fun. 
but not a lot of goals. Only two of them scored on the night. Oakland, Detroit played a 1-1 draw. Ricky, give me some final thoughts. I think we'll start with the visitors. Detroit City coming off the heels of beating Monterey Bay. What was the reaction going to look like? We talked to Noah, to Trevor, Trevor James, and he said, look, we're going to create chances, but how clinical can we be? Chances were created. The clinical nift, Cliss, that's what you need to work on, especially that man, massive. And for Noah Delgado, I think, in the Oakland Roots, you start to see heavy legs as the game progressed, especially in that second half. Didn't really offer anything going forward, but I think in the end, a 1-1 draw is probably fair to say. The Detroit City is going to want to take all three points. They were so good, but that man was even better. Yeah, Paul Blanchett, eight saves on the night. We'll look more at his night, and also the full-time highlights and stats in this thing. Oakland and Detroit, they play themselves level at one apiece. Little things can make a big difference. To have families access much needed resources, Anthem Blue Cross and Oakland Roots teamed up to deliver 2,300 diapers to the East Oakland Collective. By supporting parents and babies, we can improve the health of our communities. Here's to a brighter future and many more random acts of kindness. Learn more at oaklandrootssc.com slash anthem. Last call here from Hayward, California, Oakland Roots. Thanks to that, man. Paul Blanchett, the skate. They tie up things with Detroit City 1-1 and in full time. Playing level to a draw, Ricky, let's take us through the full time highlights. Started off extremely quick. It all comes down to the movement of Trayvon Reed, the stretch, this back line of Detroit City, and then Johnny Rodriguez didn't score in the last two games. Gets a start here. That's a trust in El Delgado on the striker. But as everyone drops off, the need a second invitation to pull the trigger and what a fantastic strike he hits it so clean and so pure the lack of rotation just tells you all as it's dipping to that far post there's nothing that sign washer can do fifth minute though set piece for detroit and they capitalized brilliant way especially when you're on the road to call yourself back into the game you ask for quality service you're going to get it from this detroit talented side Stephen carroll gets on the end of it what a quality and easy finish for the player of that quality and then we're going to see a lot of this we're going to see a lot of detroit city getting themselves in a very dangerous Opportunity, and then Paul Blanchett, not once, but twice. Massive between the six for the Oakland Roots. Yeah, he was great. Robin Morris there near the end of the first half of action. 45 minutes in the books from the Bay Area. And we were locked up at one apiece. Second half, we go in the 72nd minute. And this is, one, once again, a fantastic save. It's an, almost an uh-oh moment from the Ville Hackshaw. And then Paul Blanchett, just watch the movement. Gets down to his feet, how quickly he writes up. And that's a great first touch from Darius Suarez to create separation. But a big bear call to put it out for a corner kick. And then this is probably the best one that we're going to see all season, I would I would argue. Max Rodriguez does everything right. The technique, he hits a cross from the ball. And as it's bending away, pushes it into the, that post to get up once again. This is a terrific view. We'll see how good the full extension. Mm. Just words cannot describe how good he was tonight. Paul Blanchett, fantastic on the evening. Had eight saves in the affair, full-time stats. A 1-1 drop, you see the shots while there were 16 of them for Oakland. Not a lot of them threatening or as dangerous as Detroit's nine on target. And then I think if you're nodes, oh God, you start to see the heavy legs in terms of just the quality that you're producing in the attacking half in that second half. And just also not offering anything going forward. And for Trevor James, there's so much to take from this match. The spaces that you're able to pick up. I thought Reese Williams was massive. I thought Ben Morris was terrific. Max Rodriguez joked the two players in the center of the park. But again, not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you start to produce, whether it's goals, whether it's assists, you need to right that ship going forward in the remainder of this 2023 USL Championship season. Well, for Oakland, 34 points now, and Detroit City with 24 points. As we took take a look at the out-of-town scores, brought to you by Visit Oakland. Get out on the town and visit Oakland to explore arts, culture, and world-class cuisine. And a lot to take in here. Phoenix rising after some heavy words from Longera on Twitter. That's a reaction that he would want 
taking care of Monterey Bay at home. And then Orange County, completely different look, Orange County, that we've seen from start to season. They take care of Monterey Bay and then Las Vegas Lights losing 2-1 against Sacramento Republic. Yeah, San Antonio rebounding after a bad beat last week to Miami FC. First time they have gotten beat here in 2023. Nevertheless, they climb out of it and they're back in the win column. John Rodriguez, his ninth goal of the season, started off the offense in high gear for Oakland, but quickly came Detroit and everything else was left up to that man, Paul Blanchett. Eight saves on the night. One of the heroes of the evening for Oakland. They played a 1-1 draw for Ricky Lopez Espin. Hope you enjoyed this one. We certainly did. 1-1 is the final. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.